any guesses on what helps run all those vehicles and semi-trucks we've been seeing? Here's the hint for you. It's a renewable fuel source made from this. Well, not the popped kind that people eat. Yeah, it's pretty close though. It's actually this. Yellow dent or field corn. And today, with your help, we're going to decode the biology and science behind converting the stored energy in this into renewable fuels such as biodiesel and ethanol that help power America's cars and trucks. So sit back and enjoy the journey. Next stop, Shell Rock, Iowa. Critical questions. What biological reactions create ethanol? What role does chemistry play? Yo, Mission Control, we could use a little help explaining the concept of stored energy in a kernel of corn. We're a little busy navigating to our research location. Yeah, I can see you're really slammed with that navigating thing and burning those renewable fuels. No sweat. I'll take it from here. Okay. Let's start by analyzing the fuel in their tank. Most of it is made from ancient sequestered solar energy that was converted into crude oil millions of years ago. Check out our website for that science video and lesson. But some is actually modern renewable solar energy that's been converted into what's called ethanol, which is a type of biofuel that can help cars and trucks run cleaner and more efficiently. What's your definition of a biofuel? And what are biofuels used for? Now, let's start with the building blocks of biofuels. We know that plants, like corn, use solar energy in their chloroplasts, in their leaves, to convert atmospheric carbon dioxide, water, and nutrients into carbohydrates. You know, the starches and sugars that make up the plant. Ta-da! That's photosynthesis in action. And during the process, plants give off oxygen, which is vital to us mammals. You knew all that, right? These corn seeds, or kernels, contain 62% starch, 20% protein and fiber, 15% water, and 4% oil. And it's that converted and stored solar energy that they use to make ethanol. Uh, I think. But the real question is, how do they do that? Hmm. Oh, just in time. Back to you guys. We know you can't put corn on the cob in your fuel tank. <laughs> but what? properties make this a prime feedstock for creating biofuels? One of the main ones is its starch content. So the starch content of corn as it comes into our plant is about 60 to 65 percent. Another reason is it's very plentiful in this area and it's renewable so we can put it in and grow it within one season. So one kernel of corn of this size planted into the ground can multiply into 800 kernels of the same size. That's some serious multiplication. Time out. You said that corn was one of the prime feedstocks. What are the other ones? Corn is our primary source, but when you go to other areas, there's things such as milo and sorghum, sugar cane, sugar beets. So they all must have something in common. Yes, they all have a material such as a carbohydrate or starch that can be broken down into the format to turn into ethanol. What's really unique about the corn, though, is that we're able to use every component of the corn, not just the starch. So not only do we make ethanol, but after we pull the ethanol out of the material, we have protein and fat and fiber left that all become components of animal feed. First, local farmers deliver corn to our ethanol plant. Once here, we weigh the loads on large truck-sized scales and take samples of the corn to test for quality. Then, the trucks proceed to the loadout area and dump the corn into this underground system. Next, conveyors carry the corn to these concrete silos and steel bins. 
You mean to tell me that these things are full of corn? Absolutely. We do have corn in both of these silos, about 500,000 bushels of corn in each silo. 500,000? All right, we saw the corn go through the grate and onto the conveyor belt. What happens next? A bucket elevator takes the corn all the way to the top of the silo. And through the silo, we've got a piece of equipment that it's called a scalper. A scalper basically segregates the corn from foreign materials like rocks, gravel, or whatever. So once it's gone through the scalper, then we're ready to feed it into the hammer mill. And in the hammer mill is actually where the corn gets con converted into flour. So the hammer mill is a mechanical piece of equipment that converts kinetic energy into repetitive blows to the grain, to the corn kernel. And with multiple impacts that the corn kernel sees within the, the grinding chamber, it basically converts into smaller, finer particles, which we call it corn flour. And then the flour gets conveyed across the street into our process building where the process of making ethanol happens. All right, now that we've literally crushed the corn, let's explore some of the chemistry and biology that goes into making this into biofuel. Let's get cooking. Thomas, you're right. We actually do cook a material as it comes into the process. Well, how does it start? So corn, as we receive it, doesn't have starch that we can access for fermentation. We actually have to break down those starches into a usable format. We do that in our cook process by adding heat, enzymes, and water. The enzymes are the catalyst which jump starts our whole reaction. However, we don't just use one enzyme, we use multiple enzymes. So we use two enzymes in our cook and fermentation process, and they are both called amylases because they break down sugars. The first one that we use in the cook process is called an endoexyme because it only breaks down the sugars in the middle of a starch chain. But the enzyme that we add when we get to fermentation is called an exoenzyme and it's called a glucoamylase because it only eats off the terminal end glucose. Oh, those guys are like Pac-Man, eating from both sides. So this is what we start out with, pure starch in our corn flour. And this is what we end up with going into a fermenter, mash. Have you heard of yeast before? Oh, oh does that go into bread? It does, actually. Fermentation is similar to baking bread. And yeast, to me, are the cool cats of the whole process because Ooh. they are the workhorse. Without the yeast, we would not have ethanol. So the yeast are a living organism just like you and I. If a human body needs it, then the yeast need it. So we give yeast vitamins and minerals. Much of that comes from the corn itself, but we also add a nitrogen source in urea as the main nutrient for the yeast. They perform best when they're not too hot or not too cool. So we actually run fermentation at a very narrow range of about 90 to 93 degrees Fahrenheit. So what do these little yeasts look like? They're microscopic little single cell organisms that are oval shaped, similar to a football. But you need a magnification of 100 to 1,000 times to be able to see the yeast cells. After fermentation, we extract the ethanol via a two-step process, the first of which is distillation. So we inject heat at the bottom of the column and our fermentation material at the top of the column. Ethanol has a boiling point of 173 degrees Fahrenheit Water has a boiling point of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So as we heat up the material, the ethanol vaporizes out the top of the column and the water and the solids come out of the bottom of the column. So our distillation section actually utilizes three columns to make sure that we can get all the ethanol out of the process. Good job, team. Well, so far. You got some serious questions to answer, like what happens to all that ethanol once it's made? And what about all that corn mash or mush? Find more science smarts at intotheoutdoors.org.